continuing on with our season previews, today we're going to be looking at the Minnesota Twins. Not too much of an intro needed here, let's get right into the video. The Twins over the past couple decades have built a reputation of being known as playoff chokers and a team that really doesn't do much outside of the regular season. And last year was sort of similar to what we've seen from the Twins over the past couple seasons as they finished at 78-84, and which was good for third place in the AL Central as they missed out on the postseason. But this offseason, they've made some pretty intriguing moves. So far, they've picked up impact players like Kyle Farmer, Christian Vasquez, Joey Gallo, and Pablo Lopez. As for their subtractions, they've only lost Luis Arias, but that was in the Pablo Lopez trade, so really they got something back for him, and outside of him, they really haven't lost any significant names. Now last year, this team was the definition of average, as offensively, they had a 718 team OPS, which ranked 11th in all of baseball, and they had 178 home runs, which ranked 13th. Now looking at this year's projected lineup, we have to start with Carlos Correa, who last year in his first season in Minnesota hit 291 to go along with 22 home runs and an 834 OPS. Not only is Correa the best bat in this lineup, but I also think he's the best player on the Twins right now, and it was huge that they were able to re-sign him after all the crazy stuff that went on this offseason. They also have another impact player in Byron Buxton, who last year, when healthy, was great as he hit 224 with 28 home runs and an 833 OPS. On top of the middle of the order power this guy provides, he's also one of the best defensive outfielders in the league. He is a gold glove caliber outfielder, and he is all around one of the best twins. Another impact player on this offense is Jorge Polanco, who last year hit 235 to go along with 16 home runs. For Polanco's standards, those numbers weren't great, but I fully expect him to bounce back and put up close to all-star caliber numbers next year. Behind the plate, they have Christian Vasquez, who they picked up from the Astros, who last year hit 274 to go along with 9 home runs. Kyle Farmer was another pickup from the Reds, who I really like. Last year, he hit 255 with 14 home runs and 78 runs driven in. They also have a very underrated infielder in Jose Miranda who last year hit 268 with 15 home runs and a 751 OPS. Now looking at their outfield, they have Max Kepler who last year wasn't great. He hit 227 with 9 home runs, but in the past he's played much better and he really can't get much worse than he was. Nick Gordon is another decent outfielder who last year hit 272 with 9 home runs and 6 stolen bases. And they also have Joey Gallo who they picked up from the Dodgers. Yes, he's not going to hit for the best average in the world, but he does provide you with decent pop. And a couple other younger guys who I think could have an impact on this offense are Royce Lewis and Alex Kirilov. They're both injured right now. Kirilov will be back at the start of the season. Lewis, on the other hand, is going to be out for a good chunk of the season, but both of them, I think, have potential to have an impact on this offense. Now, one prospect to look out for in Minnesota is Brooks Lee. He's a shortstop and the number 32 prospect in baseball. He's probably not going to get much at-bats this year with the depth chart and the players they have ahead of him, but if injuries come up, he could see the big leagues. So as a whole, Minnesota's offense isn't too bad. Last year, they finished just outside of the top 10, and after losing Luis Arias, that is going to hurt, but they also picked up some impact bats in Kyle Farmer, Christian Vasquez, and Joey Gallo, so I think they have the potential to be close to top 10 yet again. Now as for their pitching, it was a little worse than their offense as they had a 3.98 team ERA, which ranked 19th. Getting on to the starting rotation, we have to start with Sonny Gray who last year on 120 innings posted a 3.08 ERA with 117 strikeouts. They also just made the big trade that I mentioned earlier where they picked up Pablo Lopez from the Marlins who in 180 innings last year had a 3.75 ERA. Another impact arm in this rotation is Tyler Maley, who in 121 innings posted a 4.4 ERA. And we can't forget about Joe Ryan, who was really good last year as in 147 innings he posted a 3.55 ERA with 151 strikeouts. And for the fifth and final spot in this starting rotation, it looks like it's going to go to Brent Ober, who last year on 56 innings posted a 3.21 ERA. I also want to mention a couple other starting rotation candidates and Kenta Maeda and Chris Paddock. They're probably not going to start out this season in the rotation, but they could get some spot starts here and there. Now getting onto their bullpen, last year it was middle of the pack as they had a 3.84 bullpen ERA which ranked 16th. This year it looks like the closer role is going to go to Johan Duran who last year in his rookie year had 8 saves to go along with a 1.86 ERA. They also have Jorge Lopez who will most likely get a lot of the 7th or 8th inning work. Last year he had 23 saves and a 2.54 ERA. Another impact arm in this bullpen is Griffin Jacks, who last year in 72 innings had a 3.36 ERA. And a couple other arms who could have an impact on this bullpen are Giovanni Moran and Caleb Thielbar. So I do like this bullpen, especially with Johan Duran in the ninth inning role. I think he's going to thrive as he has some of the most electric stuff in baseball. So now that we looked at this roster top to bottom, let's take a look at their 2023 outlook record-wise. Now before I actually went through and looked at this roster, this was the thumbnail I put together. I wasn't too confident in this team, but now that I actually 
we look through this roster, I think they have potential to make the postseason. I really do like the offseason additions they made on top of re-signing Carlos Correa. Also, I'm a big fan of their starting rotation. They have five pretty decent pitchers who might not make the all-star team, but are going to be pretty dang good. And as I just mentioned, they have a pretty electric bullpen with Johan Duran and Jorge Lopez, who both have closing experience in the past. So this Twins roster doesn't really jump off the page at anything. In fact, they're pretty average all around, but with the division they're in and the pickups they made this offseason, I really do like them winning 85 to 90 games but it is the Minnesota Twins we're talking about today, so I could also see them finishing right at or just below 500. But I'm going to stay optimistic today. I'm going to say the Twins are going to win right around 85 games, and if all goes well, I could also see them winning 90. Let me know what you guys think of the Twins down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.